patience and resilience that's what you need to be an actor that's what I think you do need to be an actor is patience and resilience um, because it's not going to come quickly it certainly hasn't come quickly for me I think some people look at me and think you've done some cool stuff and I've said yeah but it's taken me a wee while to get there doing this stuff and by no means has it been easy at all We've been so lucky that we've had the chance to have nine months training and learning about theatre with professionals and doing it on the West End for three months. That's unheard of now. Drama schools, I think you get a week a show. Um, but I think drama schools, it's, it's expensive and it's not as accessible. Um, I think they're amazing. I'd love to, I would love to have gone to drama school. Um, but my path just has gone... a different way and I think you have to be open to that you have to be open to not they're not being a straight route you don't have to go to drama school you don't have to do the rep company some people will come out and they will work straight away and um, I think that's the way the the way of the land now is that there's much less of a path it's definitely there's no rules I certainly don't find there's there's some sort of there's no logic to it I think something like the rep certainly National Youth Theatre is that they have connections to professionals that enlighten you about what the industry is and what it's like and the hard, how hard it can be. And you sort of have a, an aspect of learning on the job with National Youth Theatre. Um, with REP, we worked with people like the Royal Court and the National and Nihai, all these amazing companies. BBC came in and did radio with us and we got like tasters of everything that drama school might give you. Um, but we were learning on the job and for me, I quite early on, I think, found and sort of ignored because I was going to drama school is what I have to do. But actually learning on the job is how I seem to, that's how I seem to work well and how I learn because I want to work for someone that um, I admire or that I know is making moves in the industry. I don't know, I just found that I wanted to work harder when I was in a job um, than when I was in a classroom. When I did the rep company with National Youth Theatre, we were told chances are when you're young you're going to get cast doing something that's quite similar to yourself to begin with because you have to sort of earn that time of being able to show that you can transform and you can do other things and have the stamina to to turn into someone totally different from yourself um, and I do find that I think there got to a stage when I came out of rep where I was auditioning and auditioning and it was so hard and getting nowhere, getting rejected after rejected. And I was trying so hard and working hard. And it got to a point where I spoke to my agent and he was going, Do you know I think you're trying too hard. I think you need to relax and forget about it a little bit. And it doesn't matter. F it. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. <laughs> I shouldn't swear, should I? Um, but he said, you know, screw it. It doesn't matter. Just enjoy yourself. Go in, do your work, leave it at the door. And... Quite honestly, I did very slowly start to do that and that's when I got jobs. That's when I started to get the last two big jobs that I've just got. Um, and it really was things like, what do you wear going into an audition? What does it matter? Like, do, do as much thinking as you need to, but the point is, take your instinct. That's what they want to see, I think. That's what I kept being told, is your instinct, it's you, it's who you are. Give some of that and then use the writing it's good writing it's there for you and then bring what you need to bring of yourself um that's certainly what i've tried to learn slowly but surely that's what i've been going on if you get a job you've got the research you have to put into doing that job it's a period drama learn about that time you have to develop a whole entire new person to inhabit and really become and do it truthfully you have to work with everyone else. You have to learn your lines. That takes ages. You've got to read and read and read um, to know about the world and not be secluded to your tiny little bubble. You have to know about so much else going on. I think you have to be so politically engaged as well to be an actor. I think directors expect that of you, to know what's happening in the world and have an opinion on things. Doing three shows at the same time on a big stage in the West End over three months You've got to look after your voice and you've got to look after your body and you've got to be fit and you've got to be healthy. And having that prolonged period of time sort of knocks it into you. I don't think, you, I mean, you can be told that, you get told that and told that when you go into jobs, but to actually be doing it is a whole other thing and to experience the tonsillitis midway through and still have to do a show <laughs> is horrible, but you just, 
have to learn how because there's no under we don't have any understudies and often i think nowadays it's less and less so that there'll be an understudy for smaller scale productions um so you've got to just figure it out and do it and i think drama school you've got far more time to find what it is that you want to do and how you want to do it and explore i think it's amazing that you can explore loads and loads of options and learn your way of working um, but i'm finding that i'm learning my way of working by doing it um which I don't know is any easier or harder. I think it's very personal to you. I mean, I could be wrong, but there seems to be a lot more people in the industry, a lot more actors trying to do it. Um, and I think having an agent really, I found certainly from going from not having one to having one um, made a real difference. It got me indoors that no way could I get in before. I said to my agent when I signed with the most recent, guys um you're, you're always told to keep your like ear to the, the ground and your nose to the grindstone and listen to what's going on and what's out there but i was going how can you possibly know about these big projects that are going on behind closed doors and she's going well, you can't you can't know that they're not going to tell you that that's not public knowledge only someone like us will know that researching what agents have clients that are doing work that you want to do um and are representing people that you admire things like that look at see if there's someone similar to you in their books and if there is chances are they're going to be a little bit more picky about who they're taking on because they don't need to have more than one of the same person to be fair everyone's totally different i know i look like loads of different people but i'm totally different to them and they're different to me and um i think you have to be really confident in yourself and your ability and your talent and sort of delude yourself that you're amazing and tell yourself that you're great because no one else is going to tell you. I sort of had the assumption that I'd do the company and went really well, had a brilliant time, best year of my life, and I'd come out and I'd start working. And I had a good nine months of rejection, of just getting close, no, not getting close, just auditioning and being told no at every single corner. And it gets really heartbreaking and gets really, really difficult. Um, and that's when I started to really doubt myself because no one's telling you that you're brilliant and you sort of go, well, maybe I'm not, maybe it's not, maybe I'm not cut out for this. My dad just kept saying to me, patience and resilience. And you have to just keep patient and stay resilient because you have to be confident in yourself and do it. Um, and then all of a sudden I sort of had a bit of a panic and my agent said, doesn't matter, just enjoy it, have fun, let it go. And I start, stopped caring, I sort of, sort of gave up a little bit and went well, well nothing to lose anymore and that's when I got the next two jobs that I'm about to start which are one six-part drama for BBC um, called Broken and it's um, written by Jimmy McGovern and it's one of the most beautiful scripts I've ever read I can't believe that I get to be a part of it and the other one is Outlander which is a um, big TV show that I get to be a regular part in um, and that's all sort of just happened and I genuinely think it's because I just stopped worrying about it um, and let myself go. I did a show called The Crucible at the Old Vic and there was a wonderful woman in it called Annie Furbank. I remember deliberating over a job and not sure whether I should do it, there wasn't much money in it, wasn't sure about the part, things like that. And she just said, just do everything, Lauren. That's what I did, I just did everything. Um, my dad says stuff creates stuff. I think it's really true, just do everything. I mean, obviously, reputation if it's going to damage your reputation and it's going to damage who you are and it goes against your morals and what you want from your life then that's when you start thinking about it but i think your gut tells you when somebody's not quite right but i do think just try and do everything that's i mean who knows take every opportunity who knows where something can lead to i've got professional jobs from doing rubbish little things on the side that i didn't want to do and then end up working and going into it and the director being incredible and young no one knows director and then ended up two years later going and working with him on an amazing project because we got on really well and we thought this is fun it's just fun <laughs> when you're in work it's great fun when you're out of work it's very very difficult rejection